Hello and welcome to my channel. My name is Josh and today we're going to be talking about the different types of stabilization found inside the Panasonic S5 and the other S series of Panasonic cameras. It's no secret that Panasonic are the market leaders when it comes to stabilization inside their cameras. And when I came over to using Panasonic cameras um, from using Sony cameras, I was extremely blown away at just how good the stabilization is in this camera. And with the S5, you actually have a few different flavors of stabilization. And I'm gonna go through them really quickly for you now so you know what each one does. So first and foremost, you have the uh, sensor stabilization, uh, which is 5.5 axis, I believe. I'll put on the screen if I got that wrong. And what that is, is essentially the sensor inside the camera actually moves to compensate for any shakes or jitters that you may have whilst taking photos or recording video, which is really nice. Then moving on from that, you also have electronic stabilization, which is essentially where um, the image is very, very slightly cropped in, um, which means that your frame can sort of move around that sort of sense size, if you like and that's all done digitally. And then you also have boost image stabilization or boost IS as it's called for short. Now this is the most harsh and the most um, solid type of stabilization I'd say. And what I mean by that is basically it locks on to wherever it wants to lock on. Um, and then when you try and move a bit, sometimes you'll see the corners do some weird shaky stuff. Um, now this type of stabilization is absolutely great if you did want to mimic some tripod or steady handheld shooting, where you're basically just filming a still subject and you want to keep that camera as steady as possible. And then there's also one other type of stabilization which is not actually uh, pre-built into your camera itself, but it's lens stabilization. Um, so the lens that I use with a Panasonic S5 is the 20 to 105 f4 as everyone probably already knows by now and that lens has image stabilization built in and that basically means that the glass elements inside the lens sort of move as well to compensate for any shake or jitter just like the sensor does inside the body itself and now when you couple that sense stabilization with the lens stabilization you really do get some extremely uh, pleasing results that take out pretty much I'd say 90% of the handheld shake that you would get anyway coming up on the screen now is a few examples that I shot recently to show you exactly what effects these types of stabilization have when you are shooting handheld. When I went out and shot these examples, I wasn't using a cage or a monitor or any other setup around the S5. I was literally just using the S5 by itself with a 24 to 105. And the reason being is so you can see ex exactly how the stabilization is actually working. And um, when you beef up and rig out your system a lot, then um, you're adding more weight to it. And that extra weight normally tends to give you better results handheld anyway. So I want to show you the most stripped back version so you can see exactly what the camera's doing Doing and not what the weight's doing. Hopefully you guys can see a big difference between no stabilization and all the types of stabilization that can be seen and used inside the S5. So here we go. Now, as you can see in the examples, without any stabilization, it is naturally quite shaky. And of course, that's because the S5 is a very light camera. Um, and then the 24 to 105 paired with the S5 is not a particularly heavy setup to start off with. But then once you add the lens's image stabilizer to that, you can actually see how much better the results are. Um, and then of course, the electronic stabilization, I don't know if you could see it, but it sort of punches into the image very slightly. And that's like I said earlier, because the electronic stabilization essentially just punches in very slightly and then uses the full uh, sensor sort of um, area to sort of of, you know compensate for any shake digitally um, and then boost is I mean I wouldn't use that if you're planning on moving the camera personally because you can see sometimes there's some weird stuff going on in the corners and stuff and that's not really what boost is has been designed to do and that is still very much something where you would be keeping your camera static and you can see that more so in the examples where you're focusing on a particular subject like the sign or like that building I was pointing out as well just how well the boost does um, it's also worth noting that I've not added 
any type of um, post stabilization inside Final Cut or the edits or anything. This is all straight from camera. So all the results you are seeing are straight out of the Panasonic S5 along with those various different stabilization modes. Now, it is absolutely crazy how good the stabilization is. And actually for quite a lot of my work, I don't even use a gimbal anymore. I mean, I used to always have my camera on a gimbal and it used to like, I literally couldn't film anything without using a gimbal. So now I have this camera. It's actually really nice to be able to utilize handheld filming and not worry so much about how shaky the end result is going to be. Um, I'd say I probably shoot about 85% now handheld, which is just crazy because about, you know, sort of a year and a half ago, I wouldn't have dreamed of filming that much handheld ever. So I do have to say that it does really change the way you use your camera when you do actually get your hands on some really decent image stabilization as found in the S series of cameras. And it's definitely one of the biggest selling points for me as to why people should be looking at the S5 if they're looking for a video centric camera that also shoots amazing stills but they do need some really decent stabilization for their handheld shooting whether that be for photo or video anyway i hope this video has helped to clear up any of the sort of weirdness around the different stabilization modes inside the panasonic s5 there is one that i've not mentioned and that is the anamorphic stabilizer and that's used for when you're putting anamorphic lenses on the s5 but i think that's quite niche and i never really did that personally so i don't think i'm the right person to talk about that particular stabilization inside the s5 i'm sure there's some more cinema centric people that that are using anamorphic lenses on a day-to-day -day basis that can clear that up for you in a nicer roundabout way. But anyway, I hope this video has been helpful to you and been somewhat entertaining or useful. And if it has been, then please consider subscribing because it helps me out massively. And hopefully I shall see you in the next one. Thank you.